autumn. It may be known for its mists and mellow fruitfulness, but there is a darker side to the season too. As the nights draw in, it often turns wetter and windier. Autumn is perhaps the most volatile of all the seasons, frequently flipping from foggy to feisty in a flash. But just why is autumn known as storm season in the UK? Well, in this video, we'll try and answer that question. Each year, in early September, we release the names of the storms for that season, because the 1st of September is the date when, as meteorologically minded folks, say that autumn begins. The statistics clearly show that named storms are far more common in autumn and winter than they are in the spring and summer. But what is the reason for this? First up, we need to establish what we mean by a storm. We're basically talking here about a low pressure system. You see them all the time on our pressure charts. These frequent visitors are what bring us stronger winds and often pretty heavy rainfall. Now, pressure is pretty much the first thing that we learn about in weather school. If you know the pressure pattern, then you can have a pretty good idea of the type of weather that you'll be getting that day. The squiggly lines, well, they're called isobars. Iso meaning equal and bar is pressure. So each isobar is a line where the pressure is the same. And they go around individual pressure systems, either a low pressure system or a high pressure system. High pressure systems are slow moving things that bring us calmer, drier, often sunnier weather. Lows, well, they're the opposite, often fast moving. They whip up the winds and bring us gray skies and downpours. But while the rain and the wind and the low pressure is all going on down here at the surface, the storm maker is actually way up in the sky, eight to 10 kilometers up in fact, because that is where the jet stream lives. And that is the key to all of this. The jet stream, that's a fast moving ribbon of air that goes around the earth from west to east. It travels at speeds of up to 250 miles an hour. Now there's actually more than one jet stream around the world, but the one we're interested in is the one that wiggles and writhes across the North Atlantic. That's the one that dictates our type of weather by moving the low pressure systems, the highs and the lows across the Atlantic and uh, on their way towards us. If it's sitting up to the north, as we'll see here, then what it'll do is it will take the low pressure systems with it here and that allows high pressure to be sitting across the UK. But what sometimes happens, or often happens as we get into autumn and winter, then we'll see the jet stream actually more shifted down to the south. And when that happens, what we get is the low pressure systems barreling in across the UK. And if it's in the mood, or rather in exactly the right shape, it can actually generate or spin up low pressure systems from nothing, turning them into powerful storms that barrel into us. Now, not every low pressure system is a storm. In fact, the vast majority aren't. But when we get a powerful one, they can create dangerous and damaging gusts of wind and the rain can be heavy enough to cause flooding. And if we think that a low is going to cause significant disruption to the UK, then we give it a name and then it's officially a storm. So when the jet stream is in the right position and the right shape, it can generate these violent lows that come slamming into the UK. So it's really the jet stream that dictates how many storms we see. That leads us to what drives the jet. And uh, well, that's the big question. In the first instance, it's to do with the sun and how the Earth moves around our closest star. Now, we all know that the sun heats the Earth, uh, but because the Earth is a sphere and because it's rotating and because it's also going around the sun and because it has a tilt, and well, there's basically lots of different factors, but the sun doesn't heat the Earth evenly. And that's why we get warmer conditions 
at the equator than we do at the North and at the South Pole. That's the reason why it's cold at the poles and much warmer at the equator, because parts of our atmosphere get more energy from the sun than others. Now, the atmosphere, being a natural system, likes things to be in balance. Simply naturally, the Earth's atmosphere wants to send the warm air to where it's colder and vice versa to even things out. We also know that the Earth is spinning. It's what creates night and day. But it also creates something called the Coriolis force. And it's this force that means that balancing out of the energy doesn't happen simply. What actually happens is a complex three-dimensional circulation gets set up around the world. Now, there's more detail on this global circulation pattern in a series of short videos, and we'll put the link in the description. But very quickly, within this global circulation, you basically get areas of rising air where we get heavy showers in the tropics, and you get large areas around the globe where we've got areas of falling air, and that generates semi-permanent areas of high pressure and very dry desert areas. The jet streams, crucially, are also created as part of this global circulation. And again, in short form, for the purposes of this video, what we need to understand is the jet stream is basically fueled by the difference in temperature between the poles and the equator. So the larger the difference between the cold at the poles and the warm air at the tropics, the stronger the jet stream will be. The bigger the temperature difference, the more rapidly the atmosphere tries to even things out, and that generates a faster jet stream. Now, the tilt of the Earth becomes key. It's the reason we have seasons. The Earth doesn't spin on its axis like this compared to the Sun. It's actually got a tilt. And uh, it's this tilt which gives us the seasons. That tilt is 23.4 degrees. It means that if the sun is over here, then the northern hemisphere is pointed away from the sun during the winter time. And uh, the southern hemisphere at the same time is having its summer. It's pointed towards the sun and so it's warmer. But if you think about it, the tilt doesn't really affect the amount of energy we're getting around the equator. So the temperature here doesn't change as much. In the tropics, we talk about a rainy or a dry season rather than the four seasons that we see at higher latitudes. So if the temperature in the tropics isn't changing much, but the temperature at the poles is, that means the temperature difference is greater in the winter between the North Pole and the equator than it is in the summer when the North Pole is warmer and pointing more towards the sun. Now remember, the atmosphere wants everything to be in balance. So as the Earth is tilting away from the sun and that increases during the autumn and into the winter, that drives an increase in the jet stream because the temperature difference is increasing and it's trying harder to rebalance. So we know that the jet is driven by a temperature contrast and that temperature contrast is largest as the earth tilts away from the sun in the autumn and the winter. And that means the jet is generally gaining strength through the autumn. And that's what increases the number of low pressures that we see generated close to the UK and increases the chance of getting a storm. Now, the jet isn't a stationary thing. It, it wriggles and jiggles and changes in intensity. It can be pretty feeble, hardly there at all, but it can be intense, some of the strongest winds in our atmosphere. The tilt of the Earth plays a significant part, uh, but as with most things in our atmosphere, there's a lot of other factors involved as well. Things like El Nino, the polar vortex, and other global drivers, they all have an influence on the jet. And uh, for more on those, you can watch another one of our great videos uh, from Honor. And again, we'll put the link in the description. On average, though, the jet stream is gaining strength in the autumn, and a stronger jet is more likely to spin up low-pressure systems, making them more frequent visitors and increasing the wind 
and the rain across the UK, and therefore the chances of getting a storm. We only name a storm if we think there will be significant impacts. It's not just on the wind speed or the sheer amount of rain. Leaves are a good example to use here. A gust of wind is more likely to cause a branch to come down if a tree is still in leaf because the leaves themselves create more resistance than if the branches were bare. So the same gust of wind has a higher chance of doing damage to trees in early autumn compared to winter. Then there's the flooding aspect. Drains, etc., get blocked by leaves. And so in the autumn, as the leaves are shedding uh, from the trees, there's more leaves around on the ground, and that increases the chances of the drains getting blocked, increases the chances of flooding. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this explainer helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more weather wisdom. Click here to watch that video I mentioned with Honor about global weather drivers, those large scale, often pretty complex systems within our atmosphere that can influence our weather. Make sure you like and subscribe for daily uploads.